All right, we missed last Sunday, so we're going to have last Sunday's lesson, lesson number 11. The title of it is A Man of Faith and Love. The emphasis, well, let's go to the memory verse there. It's two verses there, and we'll run into it here in a little bit. I thank my God making mention of thee, thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and towards all saints. Uh, this was a letter that Paul wrote to Philemon, or Philemon, however way you want to pronounce that. But, uh, that that's who that was directed to. I'm going to read the emphasis there. It's the adult emphasis. Philemon was a dearly beloved saint. He was a man of great faith. He loved Jesus and other saints. And you know, he's a good example for us. We've got to love Jesus. I mean, that's, that's no way around that. And we love the saints. We love to see the saints gather in and, and you know, people come in and, and maybe, you know, we've had struggles or something through the week, but you know, it's an encouragement when we see one another as we come together. And even the sinners out there, we love them too. We have to love them because Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Philemon was a blessing to Paul. And a great example of the believers. He lived in Colossae and opened his home for worship service. His servant, Onesimus, had run away and been converted by Paul. This short letter is seldom preached on, yet it deals with one of the most important topics, that of forgiveness and restoration. Most of that will come in the next lesson. He's just telling us that. You know, forgiveness. Uh, the what Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross, is not to be taken lightly. You know, so many people out there say, "Well, all you got to do is accept Jesus and and ask for forgiveness," and you know. It's it's simple. Yes, it is simple, but there is truth in it. There is, and when you when you are forgiven of your sins, it means so much to you, and it's 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 not to be taken lightly. I mean, what Jesus did on the cross and and through his trial and all is not to be taken lightly. I mean, it, he paid a great price for us. And that's what it was for us. It was nothing for him at all. Nothing. But it was for us. And that's one thing that we need to really uh, keep in the foremost front of us uh, is that, that it is very important. It's very real. It's very, uh, uh, we have so much to be thankful for in that Jesus gave his all for what? For an old, washed up sinner like me, you know. And, you know, I mean, just nothing but Jesus seen, seen what he seen in us and that he went through with what God had, had for him to go through. So it's very important there. We'll go into the uh, um, first reading there. I'm going to need a couple of uh, helps there with a couple of names there. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and, la and fellow labor, and to our beloved, help me out there, Aphia and Harkabeth. I hope I'm saying that right. Our fellow soldiers, and to the church in thy house. Sounds to me like 
this letter was written to Philemon, sounds to me like he opened up his house and had church services in there. That's what it sounds like. That's that was a very common practice back in the Old Te or New Testament. Uh, was the saints opened up houses? It was maybe maybe it was at somebody's house most of the time, but probably in some places it was probably passed around from house to house. I don't know, but you know, it doesn't matter where you meet, as long as God's there. That's what's most important, and you know. We've been in services where we we have, and usually ours is all in in a in, in a church building. Now we have met in houses. We met in houses several years. You know, sometimes it was at uh, Brother and Sister Bayless's house. Sometimes it was at our house. Uh, we even met in uh, Eric and Tammy's house a few times. You know, and and several different several different places. But you know. Wherever we meet, if God's there, it's what God wants us to do. And you know, when when God's there, we can Christians can feel it. Christian can, knows when uh, that is being accomplished. The, I'll go here with the commentary. There, it's a junior commentary. This letter was addressed mainly to a dearly beloved fellow laborer and close friend of Paul, which I've already said was uh, Philemon. However, Paul no doubt wanted others to read it. And you know, anything that Paul wrote uh, uh, that we have in the, in the Bible is good ammunition for us today, even today. Two th almost 2,000 years, 1,900 years ago, 2,000 years ago, you know, and it's still... It still applies to us, and we can still reap the good out of it uh, uh, in so many different ways there. It even, it even has some good advice for us today, that's what he's, that's what he's saying there. And, I, and I'm agreeing wholeheartedly with that, because what Paul wrote didn't go out of style 100 years after he died or anything like that. It's still good today. Paul was prob what's that? Truth doesn't change. Truth doesn't change. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Paul was probably in prison, and it is possible that he dictated the letter to Timothy. You will notice that the place of worship was in Philemon's house. It is not known if Philemon was considered a pastor. Nevertheless, his house was open as a place for the church to gather and worship. Some commentators think perhaps that uh, Archippus, I think I'm saying that right, was the pastor. Uh, you know, that's not, that's not proven completely, but uh, there's a good chance that that was. And the other one could have been Philemon's wife. And so, the, you know, it's, it, it, it's uh, possible of that. So, you know, that kind of, as you read Philemon, you can kind of keep that in your mind and and uh, and I don't think we do any harm to the scripture when we do that. So, so uh, but Philemon wa was a man that that opened up his house and says, "Come on in, and we're going to have church services here." Now, whether he was the pastor or not, you know, open up your house. Uh, you know, it don't have to be always the pastor's house that we go to, uh, like I mentioned earlier. You know, and all, but but you know. If God's there, you're going to have a church service. That's 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 and without God, what's the use of having a church service? It's 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 pretty void and and not not that good. I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, the second uh, reading there: grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, verse four. This is the first verse of our memory verse. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. This was obviously a friendly letter to someone held in high esteem. He sends grace and peace from God. Why did he not say, I send you grace and peace? Paul can't do that. You know, I can say, 
I can send you grace and peace, but I can't do it. It's only through God. And what did he say there? Grace, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So God, the God and Father or the Lord Jesus Christ is the only ones that can send grace and peace. Also, the Holy Spirit can send grace and peace. You know, that's where the grace and peace come from in our hearts and lives today is to have the Holy Spirit. You know, I mentioned three, three persons here, God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Well, that's the Trinity that I was talking about or that, that, that we, have, we know about is the Trinity. And they all three are in agreement. And that's only where grace and peace you know, we can show compassion. Yes, we can do that. But there's still nothing better than to have grace and peace from God. That's, that's, that's the only, that, that's where the real blessing comes. This was a remarkable act of kindness. Furthermore, Paul spoke, spent much time in prayer for Philemon. You may remember he prayed without ceasing for the church of Rome. That's found in Romans 1 and 9 and it says, For God is my witness. For God is my witness, he's saying. Paul's saying that. Whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. Jesus Christ, who he's talking about. That without ceasing... I make mention of you always in my prayers. You know, it's an encouragement to know that somebody's praying for you. You know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll, they may take it kind of, oh, so you think I need prayer? Yes, I do. I do need prayer. I mean, the, I think the strongest Christian still covets prayers of the saints of the pastors, of whoever whoever it might be. Yes, to pray for one another is not a pull down or a let down or, or a put down, but it is, I want to see you in heaven. That's, that's what it's all about. Encouragement, prayer for the saints. To know that Paul, as important as Paul was, Praying for the Romans. As important as Paul was, uh, Philemon, he says, Paul says he's praying for me and my family, you know, my wife, my pastor, or if it's not the pastor or whoever, you know, he's praying, praying for us. He's praying for us here at Colossi, the Colossian church is what he's talking about. It's an encouragement. I love, I love to hear people say, well, we're, we're going to keep you in our prayers. And to know that there really are. Now, you know, a lot of times uh, people will say that just, you know, and you can kind of pick up on that sometimes that, oh, I'll, I'm keeping you in our prayers and then off and forget all about you, you know, and all. But, you know, when there's a strong burden, and let us not do that reluctantly. Let us pray for one another and keep a prayer burden in our hearts because it's 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 not good when you when you say you're going to pray for somebody and then forget about them. You know it's that's not good. How dependable are you? How much of a prayer warrior can you be if you do that? Going on into verse five, it says, and this is the second. Uh, 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 verse of our memory verse there. We had two, two verses I said there. Hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and towards all saints. Hearing of thy love and faith. You know, Paul is just making a mention of this not to blow Philemon up or not to say, oh, you're such a great man. No, that's required of us. You know, hearing of thy love and faith. We need to have love in our hearts. That's required of us. 
We need to have faith in our hearts and lives. That's required of us. You know, Jesus uh, uh, said something, something to the effect, will I find faith when I come back to the earth or something in that, that effect? You know, faith is required of us. Love is required of us. You know, and you can go down through all the fruit of the Spirit. All of them are required of us. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. I can't name them all, but you know, you know the ones I'm talking about there. You know, they're all required of us. You know, if we're leaving out one of them, we need to work on that. It's, you can't leave out any of them. Right, right. And, you know, that can grow then. It grows. And, you know, as it grows, you know, you become more passionate. You become more long-suffering. You become more, more, and more hospital, hospitable. You become more and more of, of, of all of it. And that's what God wants to see. Right, right. More of the fruit by pruning the branches, as Brother Bellis brought out in John 15. John 15, I think he said. And so, yeah, that's that's true. That cut off that stuff that's way that's wasteful. Cut off that stuff that's sucking uh, away the things, and get rid of them, so that we can grow. And that's that's what he's talking about. Hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. How kind and considerate of Paul to acknowledge the good things, the good things that he was hearing about Philemon's love and faith, not only toward Jesus, but also towards all saints. And you know, that's 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 the way we should be. That's that's required of us, like I, I've, I've said there. Notice how his reputation was well known. You know, we, we are in control of our reputation. The kind of reputation we have, we're in control of it. That, that's definitely our responsibility. Now, people can talk bad about your reputation, but you know, as long as you're doing things right... As long as you have a good reputation, they can do all the talking they want to. God knows what your reputation is. You know, Jesus, I think everybody would say Jesus had a real good reputation while he was here on earth. You know, I think all of us will agree to that. But you know, they tried to drag his reputation through the mud. They, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the uh, the uh, 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 scribes and all them they tried to drag Jesus' reputation through the mud and I'm sure that maybe some people fell for it but you know there was other people that says I don't see that in Jesus and you know that's the same way with us if we have a good reputation people may come across to other people that says oh that brother Larry you know man he's a He's no good character, you know. Well, I don't see that in him, you know, somebody might say, you know. And, you know, it's, it's not what people says about you. They can, they can talk bad about you. And, you know, we have to be long-suffering. We, ex- we have to produce that fruit of the Spirit that God has given us and be humble and know what God has for us to continue to do and live out our reputation in the way that that he wants us to. Not to fight back. You know, that's one of the, that was one of the qualifications to uh, uh, being a uh, a, 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 a deacon. Uh, Not to fight back, not to, not to, not to argue and, and, and one thing and another. Well, that's good for us too. That's good for us too. Notice how his reputation was well known. 
We must be careful to live right. And that's one thing. We need to be careful. And in order to live right, and in order to, to be what God wants us to do, we've got to get that nose in the Bible. We've got to get that nose in the Bible, pay attention to what we're reading, know what we're reading. Oh yeah, some things are going to be a mystery to us. I'll agree with that. There will be some things that will be a mystery. But you know, if you keep reading long enough, you'll realize some things. You'll realize God will open up some things and explain things. And another thing is be in church. Be in church. You know, we must be careful to live right. Get our nose in the Bible. Be in church. Because, you know, there was, there's been so many things that has been open to me, to my knowledge, that has been brought across the pulpit. There's lots of things that you can learn that comes across the pulpit. You know, I'm just so thankful that we have a pastor that studies and can bring things across the pulpit that he opens up, you know, that's opened up to me and to you all, you know, and we can understand it. Here's, and we, 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 we need to hold Brother Bayless up in prayer. As he does that. And me too as a teacher. I try to do the same thing as a teacher. So hold me up in prayer. I, I need it. I need it. We must be careful to live right. Prayer is another way. Read the Bible. Be in church. And prayer is another, is an, is another way. That we can live right. Always because not only does God know, but other people know too what our reputation is. That's what he's talking about. We, in essence, must, and I like this part, we, in essence, must represent God. Now that's a big job. But you know, if we're following God and following the Holy Spirit... We don't have any problems. But you know, God has allowed us to represent Him. You know, that's, that's a big responsibility. God has allowed us to represent Him. God has allowed us to be able to spread the gospel. You know, He's, he's allowed us to do that. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people will take it as it's a requirement, you know. But, you know, let's take it as a privilege to be able to explain the gospel, to be able to carry the gospel to one another, to be able to represent him. And, you know, this is what Paul was telling uh, Philemon here. You know, you're, you've already... You've already doing it. And he says, I make mention to you that you continue to do it, I think. It really doesn't say that, but I, I'm sure that was what was in Paul's heart, was to continue to do what he had, has, what God has for Philemon to do there. Let's go to verse 6 there. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual, effectual, I think I'm saying that right, by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. That the communication, you know, uh, that word is one of our vocabulary words, and let's, let's look at that. It says sharing, fellowship, participation, distribution. Okay, let's keep those words in mind. That the, them words, of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Where did all that good things come from that's in us? It only comes through Christ Jesus. You know, we can lead people to Jesus, but 
Uh, I mentioned this before. We can lead people to Jesus, but we can't forgive them. Well, we would like to sometimes, but we can lead them to Christ. But that's the reason why I stress so much the forgiveness of Jesus. Only he can do it. Only he can do it. And I stressed that earlier in the, in the lesson because it's not a light thing. It's, it's a very important thing in our life. When we go through it, we understand how important it really is. And you know, and as we live through the years, we need to keep that importance, importance, the important, import, how important it is, keep that in the forefront of our mind at all times. Yeah. I, uh, I sometimes kind of get tangled up on some words and maybe kind of invent my own words. But I want, you to, I want you to know that it's so important of what Jesus done for us. And, and it's not something to be scoffed at. It's, and you see that out there. Oh, oh well, all you got to do is ask for forgiveness, you know. Uh, you can go ahead and do wrong, but ask for forgiveness. Now, how wishy-washy is that? You know, that's... Beyond a doubt, Philemon was a good brother. He, however, owned servants. Some, Bible, some Bibles call them slaves. Now, you know, that's a, that's a very touchy situation. Slaves. I do not condone slaves. I do not. Uh, living in this time of time of uh, of, uh, of of history, you know. Yes, there has been slaves owned by people before, but me myself, I couldn't I couldn't do it. Now you know that's that's up to I can't I can't. Uh, uh, I mean that's 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 up. To, to that person. This seemingly was a common practice in early Bible times. Commentators fail to condemn this or to try to justify it. Well, praise God, this type of practice is no longer accepted. And this letter, as we will see next week, is all about forgiveness. You know, we can take this and we don't just tear the pages out of the, out of the Bible because it mentions this in Philemon and all. But you know, we need to be good workers for our employees. No, we're not slaves to the employees. If we're not saved, we're slaves to, 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 to Satan, to the devil. I mean, we're definitely that. But, you know, we're not a slave to our employer. But, you know, we, in order to have a good reputation, we have to do, you know, if we work eight hours, put in an eight hours of work, you know. Don't try and weasel aloud, get paid for eight hours and only do five hours of work, you know. Uh, we can take it in that, re in that respect. But, you know... We have to be, and then we have to be, uh, continue to be good stewards of God. The good stewards of God. We're not a slave to God. We're not a slave to God. We're not. We're workers in His kingdom. And, and if we're not saved then, we are definitely a slave to Satan though. I will say that. Verse 7 there. For we have great joy and constellation in thy love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee. And what does he say there? Brother. Brother. You know, I think Paul had a lot of respect. Just reading them first seven verses. <coughs> I think Paul had a lot of respect for Philemon there. And I think it come from both ways. I think Philemon had a lot of respect for Paul. We read, um, when we studied, excuse me, 
<coughs> we studied uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, in the same way. Paul had a lot of respect for Timothy, for that young man, Timothy. And you know, Timothy had a lot of respect for Paul, too. And you know, we ourselves, we can have respect for the other saints. We have a lot of respect for the saints. You know, we meet together every Sunday, and we have respect for them. Sometimes, sometimes people have a harder respect harder time to respect the ones they see than the some that maybe lives cross country, you know. You know, that, that happens. But you know, no matter who they are, if they're a saint, we need to have respect for them. You know, they may not look like us. They may not act like us. You know, they may have, eat different stuff than what we eat and all, but you know, we can still have respect for them. Because, you know, Jesus did. You know, Jesus, Jesus was a type of person that, you know, and I'm going to bring out, he didn't condemn people. He didn't, he didn't condemn them. You know, the lady that spent all she had on, on, on physicians, he didn't condemn her for doing that. He healed her. And, you know, is it wrong to go to a physician? You know, that's an issue in some, some, some congregations, you know. But, you know, what about, okay, that may be a question. Okay, what about, what about others? You know, there was a lady that he met at a well. That was a divorced woman. According to the law, she was to be stoned. You know, that was, that, was, that was what was... But you know, Jesus didn't do that. You know, Jesus, Jesus showed her what the gospel was. And what she did, she went back and said, Hey, I ran into a person that could tell me everything. You know, a person that can show me the way to God. That's, that's really what it was. There was another lady that they came, brought to him and said this woman was taken up in adultery uh, what do you say about stoning that person what do you do he went down and read on, wrote on the ground you know and one thing and another and got back up and says okay the first one without sin cast the first stone or whatever it was you know and he went back down and wrote again and what happened you know Jesus had to write to we might say that Jesus had the right, and yeah, I, I feel that he did, had a right to condemn her. But he didn't. He says, where's your, where's your uh, uh, ones that's condemning you? Well, there's none here. What did he say? Go and sin no more. That's his encouragement, was go and sin no more. You know, that's, that's what needs to be, is go and sin no more. And that's, that's exactly what... What, uh, what Jesus, that's, you know, situations come up. We don't know how to, how to treat them. See what Jesus done, to, done. And, and he's a good example. He's the only example, really, that we have. Verse 7, For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Paul is giving credit where credit is due. Don't we like it when, when we get credit where credit's due? You know, maybe an award or whatever. We, we, like, we like to be recognized. But you know, it's not really the recognition. Yeah, we like that. But you know, in the Christian life, we can do nothing through ourselves. It's only through God. If there's any recognition that needs to be given here, if you think there's any recognition that needs to be given right here, don't give it to me. Give it to God. Give it to God. Because that's, that's where it comes from. That, me trying to uh, uh, explain different things is hard sometimes. But you know, if I get it done... It's only through through God that it gets done. It's kind of, I feel like sometimes when I'm I'm teaching, I feel like Moses 
my tongue gets all messed up, you know. And that's what Moses said. Moses said, well, I'm not a good speaker. No, but you got a brother there, Aaron, and, and he can help you. Well, that's, that's sometimes the way I feel. But, you know, I have the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the Holy Spirit can bring out what needs to be brought out. He knows exactly what's in y'all's hearts. He knows exactly what you need, you need, you need, everybody else needs, and I don't. So, you know, that's, that's how important the Holy Spirit is. It is said that most people live up to what others expect of them. And you see that sometimes too. You know, if they don't expect so much from you, that's, that's only how far they go. A lot of people does. But you know, we don't live up to the expectations of people. We don't even live up to the expectations of saints. We have to live up to the expectations of Jesus Christ. A higher standard. Yes, a higher standard. The expectations of Jesus Christ. If we keep telling people that they are bad, they have a tendency to turn out bad. Have you ever noticed that? On the other hand, if we truthfully acknowledge the good things about a person, they will have a tendency to live up to our expectations. You know, and that's kind of that's kind of uh, the nature of, of people. But you know, like I can't express the expectations we want to live up to is Jesus' standard. That's what we need to do. Paul is tactful and wise to remind Philemon of his great love and faith. That's the title of our lesson, a man of faith and love. Of, of his great love and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all saints as in verse 5 that we read. Will this prove to be beneficial when Paul asks him to forgive Onesimus in our next lesson? Well, you'll have to have to come back next week and hopefully see if that's the case. One more thing I want to read here. After Paul was converted, he wanted everyone to know and enjoy the blessings of God. He backed this up with his own prayers. Compare verse 4 with Romans 1 and 9, which I read, talking about the Roman church, how he made mention to them. He used words like grace, think of that, grace, peace, mercy, prayer, or prayers, faith, and love. You know, I mean, he mentioned them quite freely. Uh, and often in his, in his writings. These are important elements of the Christian faith and had become commonplace in Paul's vocabulary. Are they commonplace in our vocabulary? They really need to be. Grace, there's two, four, six of them. Grace, peace, mercy, prayer, or prayers, either one, faith, and love. And you know, we can add to that, like I said, long suffering, joy. You know, that's all fruits of the fruits of the spirit, is what it is. And you know, that needs to be commonplace in our heart. Because without it, how can the Holy Spirit dwell within us? If we had the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, He's going to bring all of them with Him. The Holy Spirit. He's going to bring it all. So these are important elements of the Christian faith and have become commonplace in Paul's vocabulary. I read that already here. Here he commends Philemon for his love and faith. Note also this love and faith was toward Jesus and toward all the saints and rightly so. Do you pray for your friends? 
You know, I'd say most of us do. We pray for our friends. Well, it's not in here, but but do you pray for your enemies? You know, now, you know, we might not quite as often pray for our enemies, but you know, God, Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Love those that hate you, you know. I'm not going to dwell too much on that because uh, it kind of gets off the lesson, but it's, it's also important. Friends and enemies, you know, they're, they're an opposite, you know. But you know, in our heart and life, we're just as concerned we, we are just as concerned for one soul as we are the other. We need to be. and Because Jesus is. Jesus is just as concerned. Do we let them know? Okay, going back. Do you pray for your friend? Do you let them know you love them? You know, it don't hurt anything to tell your friend you love them. You know? Do you let them know you appreciate them? You know, it's kind of like your spouse. You know, do you let her know? Do I let her know that I love her once in a while? It's important. Do you? Do I let her know that I appreciate her? Do I let her know that I appreciate what she does? You know? You know, if I don't, I may not get lunch today, you know. I mean, you know, there's, there's work involved in the things that she does That, oh, yes, she benefits some from it, but, you know, she's making sure that I benefit from it, too. You know, and it's very important. And that's the same way it is with friends. What about your parents, your pastor, and your Sunday school teacher? What about that? Paul knew how to encourage others. We need to encourage one another. We need to. People like to be appreciated. We do. We like to. We like to get an appreciation from, from people. You know, not that, that it blows us up, but, you know, we need to stay humble on that. But, you know, we do it because that's what Jesus would do. That's the reason why. Here is a little project for you. Look for the good in others. Pass a genuine compliment every day for the next 30 days. Think about that. Involve as many different people as possible. That's a little exercise that, you know, it might might be a, 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 a quite a little experiment to do. You know, when I was younger, well, I liked experiments, you know, and liked to liked to the old uh, blaze a trail or 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 explore or things like that. Well, this is a little experiment here. That uh, we can do. Let me reread that for a good, uh, for the good in others. P- pass on a genuine compliment every day for the next thirty days. Thirty days. Involve as many different people as possible. Okay, that's, I'll leave that with you. It's not a requirement, but you know, if you now if the Holy Spirit requires it of you, then it's a requirement. But Brother Larry's not making it a requirement on you to do that. But. Uh, but uh, it's very important. Our next lesson is interceding for forgiveness. So, so that's, that's going to be a lesson that uh, we'll, we'll look at next Sunday then. I'm going to leave that with you. And I uh, uh, want to uh, 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 continue to keep everyone in my prayers each and every day.